before we get into Romanticism, I'd, let's just take She Stoops to Conquer as an example. And again, what sorts of music, what sorts of dance, what sorts of songs would you um, give the students to kind of understand that period? Well, in the first place, it is now a question of what kind of a heart has a person got? Is a person, quite apart from how smart he or she may think he is or she is, have they got a good, warm heart? Have they got that kind of humanity? So that there's a new kind of a feeling of sentiment creeping in. And that is what is causing the old comedy to deteriorate, to break apart. And this was a trend that Garrick, David Garrick, and George Coleman the Elder, and Oliver Goldsmith were dead set against. They were trying to stave off that huge wave of sentimentality that was creeping over the, the theater. We're still talking the 1770s, yeah. is it right? Yeah. People like Richard Cumberland, writing plays like the West Indian, which is a lovely, lovely play, but where the, you know, the, 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 the rake in society is not a bad type after all. He really has a good heart and he will settle down comfortably with the lovely young girl because he'll be a reformed rake. This kind of thing was anathema to these, these guys. Because it wasn't hard enough or it edgy wasn't, enough it or wasn't abrasive pure, enough? It wasn't pure comedy. It wasn't pure comedy. It was sogging up the comedy. So comedy was turning into something else, which indeed it was. And would they call that sentiment soggy or yeah. sloppy? Sentimentality, yes. Yeah. Sentimental comedy. The weeping comedy, they called it. Weeping comedy. And with that happening to comedy, and with the deterioration of the old stark heroism of the tragedy, you see, they begin to melt, melt together in the middle, and it becomes drama, because a new kind of play altogether. Well, um, Garrick and these others wanted to stop that, wanted to, wanted to hold to the, the good old values. And to, the, to a large extent, they did. But even there, a certain amount of sentimentality creeps in to something like She Stoops to Conquer. Right. Because he is an idiot, this young man who comes in and thinks that this place is an inn. Uh, who but an idiot would go on thinking like that? But at the same time, he isn't so damn sure of himself because when he's confronted with a lady of his own class, he hasn't a clue how to talk to her. And so she stoops, uh, making herself out to be the uh, daughter of the, of the innkeeper, and then he can talk to her. I played it in Winnipeg, and I'm embarrassed at how bad I was, and how little I knew, and how, <laughs> how I needed to talk to someone oh, like you. Yeah, yes. I was so out of it. Yeah. I just feel embarrassed and ashamed yeah. about deeply inadequate, I probably when, when they first meet and he thinks he's talking to a lady, he's absolutely tongue-tied. And he comes out with these stilted phrases which he thinks are appropriate, and she tries to answer, and they're just talking at completely cross-purposes, and with all this high-flown, inflated language that they think people were supposed to speak in at that time. They could only speak to each other truthfully when they each think the other one is somebody else. Or, or she, she makes him think that she is just a, a maid. You can, a, a, a gentleman can talk to somebody in a rank beneath him quite easily. So we're talking about the rhetorical world and, and yeah. large reaching rhetoric actually breaking down. Uh, it is to a large extent, yes. It, sta it, it stays quite healthy, quite strong in, in the new form of serious play, the melodrama. Uh, she Stoops to Conquer is not yet a melodrama. Oh, heavens, no, no, no. That's, no. that's comedy. That's, right. that's, a, that's, a, that's a comedy of manners. But it is not the same kind of comedy that, that Country Wife is. 
Right. Or God knows that the plain dealer is. I mean, the plain dealer is absolutely brutal. Uh, we don't have any of that by this time. Not, not, even in, not even in Sheridan. We don't have it in School for Scandal. And, and the so Bibles. in terms of uh, She Stoops to Conquer, what, the dances that you would give the students are different? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, there are more country dances, more uh, dances for pleasure rather than dances to display uh, individual uh, ability. So the, yes, it, it would be more epic if that is, I mean, Hardcastle himself is by no means an aristocrat. He's a country gentleman, a squire, right. and, and much, much closer to the earth and earthy, and his wife even more so. So that uh, uh, we're in a different social sphere altogether there. But these guys coming down from the city, they are putting on all of these airs of big, great bows. And of course, the idea of a bow is to, because he's idle and tend, intends to remain that way, is to marry wealth. Yes, so they each have to go and find a wealthy widow, pre preferably, because then she knows what's what, but she's wealthy and therefore they can continue their life of leisure. So it, 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 um, it turns out uh, that the, the boys become humanized through sentiment and it's that saving grace of a good heart that makes them worthy, makes, makes uh, him worthy of the... And when you work with family. students, do you get them to improvise within that period style? Um, not as much anymore as I used to. I don't, I don't find that uh, that is as helpful. Um, but in the, in the build up to it, we take all the time we need to, to, um, to look at the, the mores of that period and, and we get them into it that way. Um, and do you look at films? Like the I, I do George recommend films. I, like I do recommend films to them. Yes, yes. There are a number of, of interesting films that they can see. Uh, the Draftsman's Contract is one right. that's right. obviously very, very useful. Uh, there's one, there's a French one called uh, La Prise de Beauvoir. Its English title is. Um, what's power? Something about power. Gaining power. Uh, it's it's about young um, Louis the Fourteenth, right? As just at the point where he's about to assume power, and then he builds Versailles, and all of the uh, incredible new lifestyle that centers around Versailles. Um, and um, there's a, a, a BBC series called Aristocrats also very, very good. Right. Very interesting for all of them.